Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to church. It's great to, uh, to have you all here uh, with us. Uh, welcome to those uh, joining online afterwards. Um, yeah, it's great to be together to worship the Lord. Uh, we're going to begin the service uh, reading from Psalm 51. Um, so I invite you to stand as, as uh, we read. So um, I'm going to read the first few verses, and then I'll let you know we'll read the last few verses together. From Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived. Yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. So let's read the, the rest of this. Cleanse me with this, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence, or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, so that sinners will turn back to you.
together this morning and we praise you. Lord, we praise you for what you've done for us, for the mystery of your majesty. Lord, thank you. Help us in our hearts, in our minds, in our spirits to, to ever be praising you. Praise where are seated, uh, please turn and, and greet someone around. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Great to see you all. My name's Dan and I'm the pastor here at Cornerstone and uh, it's been great to uh, start the morning uh, worshipping with you all and uh, as uh, I can see that Hazel's got a big reminder for me there at the back that today is St. Patrick's Day. So uh, happy St. Patrick's Day to you all. And uh, thank you for the uh, front row here who are totally representing as well. Uh, I see green. Uh, I, I noticed not to be a a bitter Welshman, but St. David's Day, I don't see a sea of red anywhere, but uh, that's okay. I actually forgot it was St. David's Day. Uh, the <laughs> there we go. We are representing. A couple of weeks late, but uh, thank you. Yeah, it works for Valentine's Day, Christmas, and at St. David's Day. Uh, it's all of the, and for Canada Day, of course, so red is the color to go. Yeah. Um, one of the things that... Uh, um, well, actually, let me uh, just share with you a, a couple of things that are going to be coming up. We're, of course, heading towards Easter. Um, we're going to have our Good Friday service um, on uh, on Good Friday, which is the 29th of this month, we will meet at the United Church at 10 a.m. Then we'll do the procession of the cross here to Cornerstone um, to start the service here at 10.30. So 10 a.m. at the United Church uh, and then 10.30. This is the first time that we will be doing this kind of ecumenical walking of the cross. It's a, a really precious experience. So if you're able to be there and you're able to uh, maneuver and to walk, then uh, we would encourage you to join us there. Uh, Easter Sunday, our service is going to be 10 a.m. here at Cornerstone. Uh, it, it will be marvelous and wonderful and full of rejoicing. Um, after the service, we're going to have an Easter egg hunt, uh, which will be out in the back or around the, the church grounds. So uh, uh, this is a great Sunday for you to bring your kids or, or your grandkids um, or yourselves, but uh, you know, please have some self-control because the kids want to get something. So don't go and uh, you know, like taking candy from a baby, right? Don't do that on that Sunday. That's bad. Um, also on that Sunday, we will be having our baptism service. So it'll be a packed, exciting, uh, enthusiastic uh, um, Sunday that really exalts the name of Christ. So if you're a follower of Christ and you've not been baptized yet, please come speak to me because I would love to have that conversation with you. Then in the, in the afternoon uh, from 2 till 10 p.m. is going to be No Other Name, which is for the, uh, for the youth. And so I've already bought some, some tickets. A number of you have already expressed that you would like to buy them. If you buy them through me, they're $30 instead of $42. If you buy them straight from No Other Name, then they will be $42. So if you're interested in any tickets for No Other Name, which is a youth conference, there's worship, there's... Uh, speakers, there are games, and it's all about uh, exalting the, the name of Christ. There is no other name under heaven by which men can be saved, which is what Good Friday is all about. So please let me know if you want to uh, uh, join us at no other name from 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. Let me just uh, read to you since today is St. Patrick's Day. Um, I do want to read. This is a prayer that I pray regularly. I love praying set prayers. And so I'm going to ask, uh, you know, Curtis's indulgence um, that I read part of the breastplate of St. Patrick to you. And if you hear anything here that um, 
that resonates, I would encourage you to look up your, yourself and to pray it out loud. This is how it starts. And, uh, you know, let's just maybe close our eyes because we are, we are praying now. It says, I bind unto myself today the strong name of the Trinity by invocation of the same, the three in one and one in three of whom all nature hath, hath creation eternal father spirit word praise to the lord of my salvation salvation is of christ the lord and then it goes into this listen to this it says christ be with me it says christ within me and christ behind me and christ before me and christ beside me it says christ to win me and christ to comfort and restore me it says Christ beneath me. It says Christ above me. Christ in quiet. And, and it says Christ in danger. Christ in hearts of all that love me. Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. And with those words, Lord God, we bind under, unto ourselves this morning the strong name of the Trinity by invocation of the same, the three in one and one in three. Lord, as we look at each other, we see you. You are all around us. You are above us. You are beneath us. You are to our left and, and, and uh, you are to our right, Lord. You are here through the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. We are not alone. And the God of St. Patrick, who lived such a tough life, he was enslaved. He managed to get through free through a miracle. And then he went back to the people who enslaved him and set off a revival in that nation. And so we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day. We thank you for, for the faithfulness of people like St. Patrick. And we remind ourselves that that God who rescued, who saved, who transformed that man in the UK all of those years ago is the same God that we're worshiping this morning. Lord, move in our midst. Move through our worship team, Lord God, and help us to know that we arise through the strength of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand as we continue.
Lord, we thank you for your love. We thank you for the firm foundation that we can build our lives on this, Lord. Lord, we declare that you're holy and there's no one like you. And Lord, as we sung, we continue to pray that you would open up our eyes in wonder and show us who you are. Fill us with your heart and lead us in your love to those around us. Lord, fill us, open up our eyes and our hearts. Thank you for the ways that you're already doing that. Pray that you continue to do that in the, in the remaining parts of the service. Lord, may your name be lifted. be dismissed to their uh, children's search program this time. If you've uh, been on social media at all in the last couple of weeks, you've probably uh, heard of Madam Web and uh, how not a great film it is. If not, then you've not been following the same people that I follow on social media. This is the latest in the uh, in the um, in the is it the Sony Marvel universe and. Uh, Anyway, it's, it's, it's been widely panned. It was even referenced in the Oscars as not a great film. And actually, the main actor, yeah, Dakota Johnson, has been similarly unenthused any time she's had to do uh, any public uh, references about it, uh, which, is, uh, which is awesome. Um, yeah, it's, it's always great when, you know, when you go out as a representative of the film and say, yeah, it's not that great. But uh, in fact, I've, I've heard that it's such a bad film that you need to watch it. And so I actually watched one, tube, one YouTuber saying, you really have to go and see it because you've never experienced such a, a participation of the crowd in watching this film. One one. YouTube comments on this trailer went like this. This film is so moving, it moved me right out of the movie theater. <laughs> but my favorite was this. I saw this movie on a plane, and people still walked out. <laughs> and this, uh, now, 
and, and this movie, I, I haven't seen it yet, um, and, uh, but um, I do plan to. Uh, maybe we can have one of our pizza movie nights at home and just watch this film and see if the, uh, if the press is right. But one, uh, there's a few reasons why this film is so allegedly bad. And here's one, is that the dialogue is not so great and um, there's a lot of product placement in it as well. Uh, like the brand Pepsi features all the way through the movie and they're not even trying to hide it at all. And so with that idea of product placement, let's uh, listen to uh, our scripture this morning. Our scripture today comes from the book of Hebrews, chapter 5, verses 5 through 10. So also Christ did not exalt himself to be made a high priest, but was appointed by him who said, You are my son, today I have begotten you. And he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, after the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obeyed him. Being designated by God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Okay, so how many of you were able to focus on the words with all the product placement? (laughs) I'm going to read it again so that we can actually hear the word of the Lord. Um, But there is a, we are heading somewhere with this. So um, let's just hear, this is Hebrews 5, 5 to 10 in the NIV. In the same way, Christ did not take on himself the glory of becoming a high priest. But God said to him, you are my son, Today I have become your father. And he says, in another place you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who, who obey him and was designated by God to be the high priest or high priest in the order of Melchizedek. So thank you, Stacey, for reading that for us this morning. And, uh, you know, of course, we saw all the subtle no-go product placement uh, throughout that scripture reading. And um, if you travel around North Gore or Osgood or Kempville, then there's a good chance it won't be too long before you see someone wearing a no-go hoodie Uh, or a drinking from a no-go cup. I'm looking out. I can even see a couple. I have one right here. And uh, and this morning, uh, we're going to be hearing from Karen, the owner of No-Go Coffee. She's going to be sharing through video and then through um, a live testimony some of her story. Now, after we watch this video, I'm going to share some thoughts about our passage this morning, specifically how Jesus engages not in product placement, but um, in, in actual presence placement. Uh, he's the protector. He's our savior. He's um, our advocate. He's, he's the one who meets us where we're at, and he's been placed specifically in our lives uh, through various ways for a very specific purpose. And uh, so he, so that's what I want to focus on is not product placement, but on presence placement. And then we'll be taking a few minutes at the end uh, to, um, ha- to have a wrap up from Karen about, about how Jesus has been present 
in her place over the past few months. And so what I hope you experience this morning is not how good Karen is at branding and getting her product out there, which she is a a genius, but I want us to focus on how good and genius like Jesus is in placing his presence with us uh, throughout our lives. So without further ado, let's hear from Karen as she shares her story. My name is Karen Rebuka. I live in Kempville and I have three children, three boys named Kai, Noah, and Jesse. And um, my husband's name is Scott Rebuka. And we uh, have lived in Kempville for, I think it's uh, close to 10 years now. I own a business named No Go Coffee Company. And it is a a home-based business. We have a building on our property where I do everything I need to do for my business here. And it is, uh, it was started in 2010. Some things I enjoy about my job are the flexibility. I really enjoy owning my own business. I think I'm a very independent person, so I love uh, being, being my own boss and being able to always have something new that's going on every day and I also get to be really creative with my business so that um, really suits my personality as well. I love that every day seems different. I have got all kinds of facets of parts of my job that are interesting and some that aren't so interesting uh, that normally go I think with every business. but. I love to use my hands and I get to do that and also see lots of people and visit with lots of people and that's, that's also really awesome for me. It's the best part actually. I came to, to my faith when I was a, a teenager but I've always grown up in the church. My father is a pastor and I went to church every Sunday and I always, I think, believed in God and Jesus. But as a teenager, a young teenager, I think I was around 13, it really became personal for me when I was a struggling teenager and going through social things and a lot of things to do with friends and I started really leaning on God. Um, at that time and I really saw God answering a lot of my prayers and I did start to pray a lot at that time and those answered prayers really made my faith solidified and I got baptized I think when I was 14 the following year and it's uh, I've never turned back since. Being raised as a PK or pastor's kid, I think really did influence me. For me, it was a very positive thing. I think because I'm a real people person, I absolutely loved going to church. I loved being amongst all the people that I knew so well and that knew my parents really well. I think I really admired my my parents and my dad and the role that he had at the time. And so for me, it was, a very awesome childhood and I didn't mind being a a pastor's kid at all. For me it was totally suited to I think my personality. I loved going and socializing and maybe being the center of attention. I don't know. (laughs) That's always a nice thing Um, for some people. (laughs) No, it was it was great. Jesus means the world to me. Uh, he, I might stop, start crying, I, I didn't expect this, but um, just the sacrifice that he's done for me personally, I see the fruit of, you know, forgiveness and blessing in my life from Jesus every single day. Um, 
Jesus has, you know, my relationship with God and Christ has helped me literally every single day of my life just navigate this crazy world and figure out my place in it. You know, I, I struggle sometimes with a lot of worries or you know, anxiety sometimes and I couldn't, I can't imagine my life without having my relationship with Christ in it. I, um, I really rely heavily on prayer and answered prayer. I wish I could talk all about the answered prayers in my life and just how incredible that has been and how this relationship with Christ is just the most um, amazing thing because in the, on the days when you feel like you're not doing things right or you're not you know saying the right thing or you know maybe not um, living in the way that God wants you to you know that you're always at the end of the day going to be loved no matter what I have been doing this business for 13 years now and I never started off wanting to be a coffee roaster. I wanted something else. I wanted to open a cafe. And when I look back now, I definitely see God's hand in this business, leading me and guiding me and sort of prompting me to do this because I feel that He was looking out for me. I had these grand ambitions to open a cafe when my children were really little. And I, now that I look back, I don't think I was ready for that. But instead, God, I believe it was God that led me to start it, start it, but start it in a different way. So I started roasting coffee just to learn about what makes a good cup of coffee. And along that journey, I kept roasting and I kept um, learning more about it and I ended up being a coffee roaster in the process. And when I look back now, I really do believe that that was God sort of leading me and guiding me into what the best thing was for me at the time. I am grateful because I've been able to set my own schedule and also one of my biggest desires was to be home for my children just because Scott, my husband, couldn't drive them around or do the things he needed to because he had to work full time. So this business has allowed me to, to be there for my kids and also to be creative and be with people and to connect with others. So it's been an incredible thing because I feel like God has allowed me to do all this stuff with His, you know, honestly best interest in mind. And now that my kids are teenagers, I am starting to feel more free to do the things that I wanted to, to do originally, which is open a cafe, except now I have all this other knowledge behind me. So I'm just so grateful for that. I'm also really grateful that I do get to see people along the way that I never would have normally seen and show God's love to them. Hopefully, hopefully I can be that light to other people. And I really do believe that coffee or tea, but I think coffee more, <laughs> is God's um, sort of way of connecting others to uh, connecting you to other people and it's like literally something that you can give to someone to extend yourself and to offer them into your home or to wherever you are and it's just like such an amazing gift that coffee is that um, can, can be a tool to show God's love and I really hope that my business reflects that and and I really hope that um, I'm able to continue this journey and see where it goes to show God's love in this way. Uh, having a busy life, which I do have, is challenging definitely at times in order to keep um, my faith and Jesus a priority. It is absolutely something that I need and want to do every day. Uh, it doesn't always happen. It's, you know, at times I, I don't get my Bible reading in that I want to do, but I am grateful for, you know, the app that I have on my phone that sends me a Bible verse every day or uh, friends that will send me, 
you know, tidbits that they've learned. I'm so grateful for the time I get to pray. I have a lot of time, you know, roasting coffee in my car. I do a lot of praying at that time. And um, I am grateful for the times I do get to sit down and, and read the Word. Um, but it's definitely a challenge. And there again, I'm just grateful for forgiveness <laughs> and also um, God's grace. And I'm also grateful for our church um, because the church, you know, is full of people that can encourage one another and um, I think that's really important too. I am involved at Cornerstone Church by uh, volunteering as a youth leader at Momentum Youth Group and I also take out uh, uh, sometimes the some of the teenage girls for coffee once in a while and I'm always open to taking out more if uh, some of them ever want to come. And I run a Bible study with Kim Holland for these girls. And there is also the Cornerstone Cafe Ministry that I will help with as well. If you're feeling really busy in your life and you're juggling many things like I am, I would definitely recommend that you keep your prayer life a priority because I, can, I couldn't get through my day without that. And I would also not get discouraged. I feel that it's a phase of life that I'm in right now. And maybe every phase of life is crazy and busy, but I, I think that also, you know, making sure that you stay connected to others, I think that's really, really important. And finding someone that you can share your concerns with. I think that's really uh, key and vital. I know I have um, a few friends that are just such a support group to me and will you know, listen and, and care for me and I'm so grateful for that. And take time out. I, I like to run and so I really feel that that is something that helps ground me and just to get away from everything and um, just move and have some time with God. So those are my thoughts on that. Let's thank uh, Karen through a round of applause there. <clears throat> the best product placement is subtle, incognito. Uh, it doesn't draw attention to itself. Maybe after the fact, we look at it and we see that it was actually there all along. And this is what we find as, as we tell our stories, is we discover the presence of God after the fact. We see what or who was there all along. And in Hebrews 5, just like in Karen's story, we're given this ability to see Jesus and how he shows up in our lives. Um, there's a lot that I could say this morning. It's a rich passage full of wonderful references and also some less clear but equally wonder, wonderful references like uh, the references to, to Melchizedek. But this, but this morning, I just want to leave us with maybe two ways that Hebrews 5 highlights how Jesus shows up in our lives unexpectedly, not in a brash Madam Web way, but in a subtle, more gentle 
way that's only visible to the eyes of faith. Um, and it's not product placement because Jesus isn't a product, but he is our Lord and Savior. And through the presence of the Holy Spirit, he places himself in our lives, sometimes in the most wonderful and subtle ways through his presence. And first of all, Jesus is the Son of God, and so he was placed with us in the incarnation. He became human. He lived among us. He was one of us, and he will always be one of us. He was human, and he will always be human. His presence was placed with us in that moment of incarnation in a literal way. Our God was who, who, uh, who rules on high, who's the creator of the universe, was placed with us in order to be with us through all that we, we go through. And so, so the first thing that we learn um, through Hebrews 5 about Jesus' presence with us is that he prayed. He was the present one with us who prayed. While Jesus was physically present on earth, while he was in the flesh, as the ESV says, he prayed, which means that God prayed to God. He was perfect. Jesus was perfect, but he experienced frailty like like we do. And so we see here that uh, he prayed. Um, where is it? Oh, let's just zoom forward. He, he prayed. It says in verse 7, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears. So we have a high priest. We have a mediator who in his human frailty prayed aloud with cries and with tears. This means that there is literally nothing that we're not able to come to him with. There is nothing that we feel should be left unsaid. Because the presence of Jesus through the Holy Spirit is with us every second of the day. And just like Jesus was our example, so we should pray with prayers and petitions, with fervent cries and with tears. Who did he pray to? He prayed to the one who could save him. He knew the right person to pray to. How often do I turn to my friends or family or social media only to help me in my time of need? How often do we uh, offer up prayers, our, our fervent cries and our tears to the wrong ear? Only one can help us. Jesus knew that. And so he prayed to the one who could save him. And we've all had these moments, right? Uh, I'm sure that... You know, Karen has had these moments, I know that I have, and I know that you have, where you feel overwhelmed, where you feel that you aren't able to carry on. And friends, through Jesus' example, we are given the right and the permission. In fact, we're welcomed to be loud in our prayers. We are welcome to be noisy and to be fervent. We are welcome to raise our voice to an uncomfortable level. The, the, the one who is present with us was a noisy prayer. He offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and with tears to the one who could save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. God could save him. And sometimes he did save him, like that time that Jesus walked through the murderous crowd. But other times, God did not save him, like in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus had to go through the suffering of the cross. There was no other way, even though he prayed and yet, in a very real way, God did save him. God saved him from actually caving under the pressure. God saved him from maybe quitting. He saved him from the oh-so-real temptation for him to cash in his get-out-of-crucifixion-free card so that he didn't have to suffer. God saved him from the temptation. And Jesus was heard because of his reverent submission. And this world, I believe, needs more of Jesus' people who practice this attitude of reverent submission in the midst of the burning coals of life. So we have a present one who prayed. We, and, 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 my, and my last point, my second point is this. We also have a present one. We have a presence. We have a present one who suffered Verse 8, son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered, and once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. So hear this, Jesus, the perfect son of God, learned obedience through his suffering. 
Try to wrap your head around that. Jesus, the perfect son of God, learned obedience through his suffering. And because of the obedience that he learned that led him up to the cross, he was made perfect. And this means that he, could own, he, he was the only source of eternal salvation for all who, who, who would obey him. Okay, so how did Jesus become perfect? Wasn't he already perfect? And the answer, of course, is yes, he was. But it was, in fact, the reason that he was chosen for the cross was because he was the perfect lamb of God. But it was the lived experience as a human that made him the perfect one to act as a bridge between humanity and Almighty God. There was an extra experience while he was in the flesh as a human that made him absolutely perfect to be the source of eternal salvation. And that was to live in every way as we do, to walk the road that we walk, to feel the struggles that we feel and yet never sin that he was tempted in every way as we are, yet without sin. So his experience as human and as God, as the God-man, made him perfect to save humans. And that's it. That's what I want to leave us with, that we have a present one that's not about product placement, but is about presence placement. We have a present one who prayed and who suffered. He's present with us. His presence is placed in our lives. His branding is on our hearts. And he invites us to walk in his shoes. He invites us to pray as he did, to pray loudly, to pray and not give up, and to have the strength to suffer and to learn obedience through our suffering because Jesus is with us. And with that being said, I'd like to invite Karen up to answer a couple more questions. Let's welcome Karen up. There you go, your uh, childhood wish of being the center of attention is finally come true. I know you love every moment of this. <clears throat> so, uh, so the author of Hebrews, Karen, uh, talked about Jesus suffering and through suffering, learning obedience. And so uh, my question for you this morning as we wrap up our time together is this, what role has suffering played in your walk with Jesus? Uh, well, um, definitely life isn't easy, and I know that you all feel probably the same way. There's always challenges, and most recently there's been a big challenge, not only opening a business, but also losing my mom. So um, just walking through that was really difficult, to be honest, and without Jesus and him knowing what suffering was, and is. Um, I just wonder how I could have gotten through that, and I just really can't emphasize like how I felt the miracle of Jesus in my life the last couple of months, so that's my honest answer. <laughs> Lovely, and we very much appreciate your honest answer. Thank you. Um, at the beginning, I talked about product placement and how we see your hats and your hoodies and, uh, you know, and your cups. Um, you know, we see them in the community, we see them in the church, and we saw them in the scripture reading at the beginning. Um, do you think that there's anything that we as a church or as followers of Jesus could learn from how companies like yours advertise or brand themselves? Um, and let me just add a second sort of a question there um, that's linked and is a follow-on. What do you think about the idea of Christians being product placement for Jesus in our culture? Well, first I want to say I did not have anything to do with that scripture video. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, I think it's a really important question, Dan, and... I think that as Christians, we need to, we really do need to be mindful of how we conduct ourselves in the community and always keeping, you know, our faith at the forefront of our mind and, 
you know, just being a representative of, of the company of Jesus Christ um, and just making sure that the church is represented by showing his love. And I just think that's just so important. And whatever that looks like for you, you know, I know we're all different and God has made us all different, but if we can just uh, make sure that, like not to be fake, but just to really make sure that that faith is um, the first thing and, and showing that I think will really help with representing what the church is meant to be. Mm-hmm. Okay. So. Thank you. Yeah, and I know that, uh, you know, I've, I, I, uh, you know it, I've had so many great conversations of faith um, at the no-go coffee house, um, totally unexpected ones, um, ones where, where I, was, I, I was absolutely not um, looking for the conversation that I ended up having, but having a third place. So, you know, first place and second place is work and home. And so often we need a third place, a third location to, um, you know, to not freak people out. And actually, No Go Coffee is is a great third location that I uh, regularly uh, utilize um, uh, there. And, and you, know, you know, just seeing how it's been um, a, a journey of faith for you and even being able to kind of witness from the outside looking in um just what that what these few months have been like with the opening of of the coffee house and all that that um encompasses as well as the loss of your mum in the same time frame um has been um um you know it's 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 just been humbling to watch and so uh you know i i i um really thank you for for your example um in all of that um my uh, last question for you is is um what are your hopes dreams or prayers for no go coffee in the foreseeable future uh, i still think that it's actually like a miracle that that cafe got open and like God is like is all over it just down to like the finest little details it's crazy like the miracles that keep happening every day and the conversations that we're having and how it got open and you know I I wasn't thinking Osgood at all like it's just crazy how it all happened and it's all it's all God, and I just ask that um, if you could like just pray that He would continue to protect the business and in so many ways, and just use it for His glory, and you know, give me wisdom. There's a lot of like tiny little details that always need to be thought of, and I'm not a detail person, if you can believe it. I'm more of a big picture kind of person, and that like I really struggle with that, and. Yeah, just that um, God would help me and bring the right people in the door that need to be brought in. And um, yeah, just pray for wisdom. And Hmm. there's a lot of prayer requests. (laughs) But um, just keep praying. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, Just uh, before we close, can you tell us one, uh, you mentioned miracles that you've seen. Um, Is there one that you'd feel comfortable sharing with us? us this morning sure. yeah um which one do i pick Kim? <laughs> one really neat one is um we are having music at the at the cafe which i never was ever it was never in my wheelhouse but it happens to have a stage and so we've started having these open mic nights on um, once a month and there was one time when, this is like in January, I think, we had, um, you know, the open mic people were coming up and performing, and a couple got up and started singing, and they sang great, they had great voices, and I didn't know who they were, and they sang two songs, but in the back of the cafe, there was like a heckler, I don't know who he was either, but he was saying awful things, like, um, you better sing, you know, properly and whatever. I can't even remember what he was saying, but it was awful. He was like yelling at the back of the cafe. And, um, but then 
during this time, while he was heckling, other people were saying to that couple, encore, encore, they only sang two songs, they wanted another song because they were so good. And so they looked at each other and they said, okay, we'll sing another song. And so then they started singing um, a worship song. They sang, this is amazing grace. And um, again, I didn't know who they were, but it was such an amazing thing for them to be singing this worship song. And then all of a sudden the heckler like disappeared. He left and um, like, it was just like, I was ready to go talk to him, which would have been hard for me. Um, But they sang this worship song and I feel like they just sang like this praise to God and it almost drove him away. It was so neat. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. All right. Well then, on that note, uh, you know, as we've, we've heard the prayer, let, let me pray. Uh, Lord, uh, we thank you um, for the miracles that you were doing. Um, Lord, we recognize that you want to work through all of us in our businesses, uh, in our regular day-to-day life. Lord, that when we surrender, that when we live that life of, um, of hu- humility, Lord, and humble reverence, Uh, that, Lord, you can do miracles and you can work amazing things. And so I pray for your blessing on no-go. I pray uh, for your blessing over Karen and her family, Lord God. And I pray, Lord, that your will would be done in that place, Lord, that it would be this third place that is a, that is a location where, where, um, where conversations are able to happen and, uh, and life is able to get real. Um, Lord, I thank you, uh, for, uh, that you are, um, the God who is with us, that you are the God whose presence is placed all through our lives, Lord God, if we just have the eyes to see. Uh, we ask this in Jesus name. Amen. Let me uh, close with, with, a, uh, with a scripture. No, you can stay there because I want people to clap as you leave. But, um, <laughs> but uh, so, so this is the uh, en- ending scripture. Therefore, since we have uh, a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Amen. Amen. Let's say thanks to Karen.
Ben and I had not coordinated, but I had planned to read the last part of uh, St. Patrick's uh, Breastplate as the benediction, and so uh, I invite you to uh, to listen and pray this in your in your mind and your hearts uh, as we read. Christ be with me, Christ within me, Christ behind me, Christ before me, Christ beside me, Christ to win me. Christ to comfort and restore me. Christ beneath me, Christ above me. Christ in quiet, Christ in danger. Christ in the hearts of all that love me. Christ in the mouth of friend and stranger. I bind unto myself today the strong name of the Trinity. By invocation of the same, the three in one and one in three, of whom all nature hath creation, eternal Father, Spirit, Word. Praise to the Lord of my salvation. Salvation is of Christ the Lord. 